Hey viewers, my name's Kara. Today I wanted to do a little sort of walkie-talkie video for you while we are out um, at my partner's parents' house. I don't get much chance to do like walkie-talkie nature walk videos anymore because where we live, we just have my tiny backyard. So while we're out here today, I thought I would do this. So the topic for today's video is actually something that's come up a couple of times before. Questions that people have asked me. We are near a road, so uh, forgive any intermittent traffic noise. Um, something that people have asked me about before, and it also came up again somewhat recently. It falls into this category of kind of basic things that I've been talking about recently, basic things that I want to cover that um, might be helpful for newer people, people who haven't watched my channel before, whatever the case may be. So what I want to talk to you about today, it's in the title of the video of course, is visualization. This is something that is actually very simple, but I think a lot of people are confused by it, the way that it's written about in different books and things, and um, it can sound a lot more complicated than it actually is. So a while back, um, I know I got a message from someone asking me specifically about visualization when casting a circle in your magical practice and saying that they were having trouble visualizing the circle being cast. So, oh, and now we've got some wind. All of the pros and cons of these nature -y videos, for sure. I checked the volume and it seems like you can still hear me, so we'll go ahead with this with just a little bit of wind maybe coming over the mics every now and again. But yeah, so a while back someone had asked me about visualization as it relates to casting your circle. And they were saying, you know, I'm following the directions in the book, I'm doing it, I'm putting my energy into it, I'm focusing, you know, I think I'm doing everything, but I'm not seeing the circle. Like, I can't see it. I can't visualize it. And what it came down to through asking them some questions, you know, like, well, what do you mean? What are you experiencing? What I determined was that based on what they'd read in books and what most of us read in books and websites and things like that is that they were expecting to be able to physically see some change in their physical environment that they expected to see the border of their circle as though they were standing in a bubble or as though they were shrouded with mist or they expected to see a glowing blue line on the floor or something like that emerge when you are doing it correctly. <laughs> so that is something that I had to kind of take a moment and explain is not really how it works. That's not what we mean by visualization. So. When we're talking about visualizing something in our magical practice, here comes another car. <laughs> I need to get further away from the road. That would be a little better, wouldn't it? It's just quieter over here because they're working in the backyard. So I, I'm going closer to the front because it's quieter up here, but then it's not when there's a car. But you can see how little traffic there is out here. Um, this is closer to the area where I'm from. So a lot less vehicle traffic and things like that. But anyway, so when we're talking about visualization in this way, we are not talking about physically being able to see a change such as we might see if we were watching it in a movie that had special effects or on a TV show or anything like that. By visualization, what we mean is seeing it in your mind's eye. We're talking about visualizing in the way of imagining. So lots of visualization exercises that you might come across in books, they're going to say things like close your eyes and or keep your eyes open sometimes and imagine that you are holding something that is very familiar to you. So one very common example is an apple. Close your eyes and picture an apple. Without having an apple sitting in front of you physically in the physical realm, can you picture an apple in your mind? And if you can do that, that's visualization. 
if you cannot already do that, it is something that you can work on, and that's why there are visualization exercises. So one might begin with leading you to imagine an apple, and it might ask you to note what kind of apple did you visualize? What color was it? You know, you might have automatically visualized your favorite, or you might have visualized what you consider the most common. And so then the exercise might lead you to visualize it in a different color. And then move on to different things, like imagine that you are picking it up. What does it feel like? What is the weight of it? What is the texture of its skin? You might imagine holding it to your nose and remember the smell. What does it smell like? And so that gets into different senses. So we might not think of that so much as visualization because it's not sight based, but that's all part of the same skill. If you can not have an apple in front of you, but remember the scent of apple so strongly that it almost seems like you do have one in front of you, that's part of this same skill that you can work on. And then you might also imagine biting into it and what does it taste like? You know, do you hate apples and therefore it tastes horrible to you? Do you love them? Um, is it crunchy? Is it soft? All of these different things, right? So these are all part of that same skill. Other examples that I could give you could be something like if you're listening to this right now and not looking at it, you can still play along with this one. Or if you are someone who is newer to my channel, take a second and look at what is on the screen in front of you. And then if I were to close your eyes, so to speak, and ask you to visualize my face, would you be able to do so? So that kind of thing is visualization. So if I ask you right now to picture in your mind a member of your family or one of your friends, one of your loved ones, someone whose face you know really clearly, maybe it's a teacher, a professor, maybe it's someone who works at a store that you frequent. But if I asked you to just close your eyes and imagine their face, can you remember what their face looks like? That is visualization. You are doing it. So this comes up again today because uh, this past weekend I was actually working at the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic in Cleveland, Ohio, helping them out. And I met someone who told me that they are having trouble with visualization, that, that they don't feel like they can see things that they're supposed to be seeing when we're visualizing. And it reminded me of that person a while ago who had asked me about visualizing circles. And so I do think that this is kind of a common problem that a lot of people aren't talking about as much because it's treated as so simple because it really is quite simple. It's treated as so simple that maybe if you're not getting it right away, you think like, oh, I must be hopeless because this is supposed to be easy and I can't get it. But it's really just because maybe uh, the things that we're reading are not really explaining it well and so we're misunderstanding what we're supposed to be doing so yeah if i ask you to just um you know remember what your childhood home looked like can you do that if i say remember this or think about whenever you've lost something and you kind of like mentally retrace your steps or you might mentally picture you know, your bedroom. Maybe I'm looking for something that I know I left it in my bedroom and I'm thinking like, okay, there's my bedside table is here. It's next to the bed. And then over there is my dresser. And then I have this pile of clothes here now. And I'm thinking, where might I have left this item? And in doing so, I'm recreating my bedroom in my mind. That is visualization. What we're doing in that moment is visualizing the place and recreating it in our mental landscape when we can't necessarily see it in the physical landscape. So that's the skill. So uh, maybe if the word visualization throws you off, think about replacing it with remember, like remember what this looks like. Um, one of my professors in undergraduate school in my theater arts program used to tell us that when we remember something, we are remembering it. In essence, we are putting it back together every time. Now there's a plane overhead, all these wonderful noises. I'll try to edit some of this out. We are getting our computer back this 
upcoming week, so I will have my good editing software back. But for now, I do have a little very simple editing software on my computer that I've been being able to use for these like big issues that come up in the middle of recording so I can cut things out. But yeah, so if we talk about um, remembering things as we're putting it back together piece by piece, every time we remember something, we are putting it back together in our minds. And I think that in terms of remembering how it relates to visualization, that can sort of apply, that we are we are creating our version of things in our minds. And that's why um, different people might remember different details. You know, when I asked you to picture my face, some people might have pictured it me on a different day or wearing a different hat or a different necklace or whatever. You know, different people notice different things. The other word that we might think of is imagine. If I ask you to imagine your favorite food, what do you do when that happens? Are you seeing it in your mind's eye? Are you tasting it in your mouth? Uh, for me specifically, if someone like mentions pickles, like dill pickles are my favorite kind, I immediately begin to taste that and I can, I recollect the smell as well, the scent of that uh, dill pickle brine. So yeah, imagine um, eating your favorite food and what else is involved in that remembrance for you? Is it a whole scene? You know, where are you when you're eating your favorite food? Are you at home? Are you out at a restaurant? Are you remembering a specific time that you had your favorite food? Um, yeah, so it's a whole sense experience and it doesn't have to just be the, the eyesight portion. I'm trying to protect the camera from the wind a little bit here. It's not working that well. But um, yeah, so it can be working with all of the senses. So not just visualizing how it looks um, in the sense of sight, but also we might think of what sounds are associated with it. So if you're remembering having your favorite meal at, uh, at a restaurant, what sounds are involved in that memory or in that recollection? And, you know, if I were thinking back to this day right now in the future, I might be thinking about the sound of the cars and trucks going by and the sound of the plane overhead and the sound of the crunching leaves under my feet which I love so much and you can probably hear um, and the sound of the birds and the trees and all of that that would all be part of that memory and so as we work on developing those skills with things that we can actually remember or you know I could work with something like this I could spend some time looking at this post feeling it, seeing the texture, seeing the colors, and then closing my eyes and trying to recreate that in my mind with the full texture, color, the full experience. So we can work on these skills with tangible things, um, and things like apples that we're very familiar with, and then we can move on to creating associations of things solely in our mind's eye. So this is how you might visualize your own place of power that might be something that you've read about if you've read about um, trance to your place of power or creating your own sacred space in your um, sort of mental landscape, for lack of a better term, um, and you know, visualizing what that is for you. Or if you're doing a meditation and it asks you to, like in whatever space you find yourself when you start this meditation, turn to the four directions and see what is there for you. That all involves this general skill of being able to create mental landscapes out of nothing, you know? And so they might um, involve things that you've seen in the real world, but you can also visualize things that you've never seen before if you just imagine them. This is a skill that young children know very well. You know, we're very used to playing pretend, imagining. Um, if you are the kind of person who still daydreams from time to time, that is visualization. So really my purpose in talking about this today was just to let anyone know that if you think you're having trouble with visualization, it's probably not that you're actually unable to do it. It's probably that things are kind of unclear about what we mean by visualization. So I just wanted to reassure everyone that most likely you are totally already able to do these things 
and it's just a matter of misunderstanding what we mean when we say it. So don't expect everything to be like TV and the movies where they have full-on special effects where they can make things physically appear in front of people's eyes. That is not what we are doing when we say visualization. Um, so it's, it's not that I have some amazing, wonderful skill that you do not. Um, we're, we're doing the exact same thing. It's just a matter of recognizing that you're doing it. And if it is something that is difficult for you, because I know some people do have more difficulty visualizing, more difficulty with visualization, um, it doesn't mean that you can never do it. It just means maybe you want to spend some time practicing it. So hopefully I gave you a couple of examples there of things that you can imagine, picture in your mind's eye, uh, try to remember different things that are not in front of you, and uh, recreate them in that mental landscape. And that's what visualization is as far as um, using it in our spiritual practice is concerned. So let me know in the comments if this is something that you've been wondering about at all, or um, if you have any cool tips or tricks for practicing skills related to visualization for other people. Maybe you've read a book that explained it really well. Um, if you can remember the name of a book or an article or anything like that that you could share with other people in the comments, maybe it'll help some other people. And yeah, I just, yeah, I wanted to do a video outside. It's been a while. I really miss it. It's a beautiful day today. My crunching leaves. So yeah, I love it. Um, have a great day. Thank you very much for watching or listening. I will see you next time, and until then, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.